Hey there, welcome back to my channel. A few days ago I made a video on how to create great React components and I kind of wanted to follow it up with another video explaining why Shetian is so awesome and basically how it won the hearts of everybody on the internet. And you might be wondering what's so special and different about Shetian as a component library to make it so popular compared to the other alternatives out there. The first thing we need to understand before we talk about it is why are components libraries useful? Well, if you don't know, there's a bunch of reasons and I'll go over the main ones and I'll explain each one as we go. The first one is definitely consistency. And why do I mean by this? So imagine you have a web page and you have a bunch of buttons on it, for example, 20 or 30 or 50. Putting aside the fact that you would have to copy paste the exact same code in 50 places, if you think about it, it doesn't make much sense for every button on your page to be the same, but slightly different. For example, let's say in one place you forgot to add a margin or the font text, or you forgot to change the color, or you missed the color by a small number, and then it adds up a bunch of inconsistencies over time. And the larger your code base is, the more this becomes prominent as you copy paste code all around and forget to do stuff. Or even if you add a new styling to a button, then you you have to reapply it to the older ones and there's a very high chance if you don't use a component library you're gonna run into an issue of consistency where your buttons drop downs selects inputs whatever are inconsistent in their appearance that is the first issue that you might run into and that is what a component library tries to solve by providing you a single component for reuse across your website the second thing is accessibility if you're building a website for anybody you probably heard about accessibility and how it's important. What accessibility is, it basically allows you to write code and write websites that are easily readable by people with disabilities. For, for example, if somebody is blind or is deaf or has any kind of disability, they should be able to view your web page the same way as all the other people do. And accessibility allows them to do that. And if you want to look into this topic further, you can read up on ARIA and how it works under the hood. But that is out of the scope of this video, so we won't go too deep into it. But that's another thing that component libraries bring to the table. And and they allow you to have accessibility on top of everything else so your users can use your website and this is really hard to do if you have no experience with accessibility so it's really important to to use component libraries especially for this even if they are headless just to have accessibility for your users and the final and the third point I'm gonna go into is extensibility. The component libraries allow you to easily extend existing components. For example, if you look at it from a perspective of Legos, if you want to build something, you will use the small Lego pieces to build something. And if you have multiple different Lego pieces, it's very easy to build anything you imagine. And that's basically what component libraries are. Your Lego pieces are your primitives like button, input, and stuff like that and it's easy to build new stuff on top of that so for example if you want to build a model with a button that closes it and with a few inputs you just need to build on top of what you already have so you already have the button you already have the input then you build the model and then you can reuse that and then if you want to build something on top of the model now you have the model in place and then you just build on top of that so it's basically a bunch of legos I think everybody loves to play with Lego, so that's perfect. And that's why you would use component libraries. All right, now that's the main three things in my personal opinion. There's a bunch more reasons, but we could spend one hour talking about it. So I'm not gonna go too deep into it because I wanna talk why ShadCN won the internet. And how I'm gonna explain that is with this example. So we were gonna start with the HTML element and explain how ShadCN makes an HTML element awesome. And how it does that is the following. So you have your HTML element and it can either have functionality or not. We're gonna go into that shortly, but that is your baseline. So for example, imagine your HTML button that you can click and it has nothing built on top of it. And now we start building on top of that Lego. The first thing we build into it with a component library is accessibility. And now that you have accessibility in your HTML element, for example, if you have the button, now you've added your area disabled, area description, depends on the component obviously, but you add those tags in and you make them work under the hood and the user doesn't have to configure them. Now you have an enhanced button component that's enhanced with accessibility. Now, 
Another thing is functionality. Now this depends on the component. So for example, the button element in HTML already has all the functionality built in that you need. So you don't really have to implement anything. But if you're using something like a drop down or a tool tip or a date picker, a date picker is a great example for this. You don't want to personally write the whole date picker logic and functionality from scratch and spend like five months doing it and then have bugs still because it's incredibly hard to do. The component libraries offer you a way to do that easily and they add accessibility, they add functionality and then you already have a ready to go date picker or tooltip or something like that. Now, if you haven't already realized it, this is everything that Radix offers. And if you haven't heard about Radix, Radix is a component library, but it's headless. And what that means is it doesn't provide styles, but it provides primitives for you to use and enhance with tiles and additional functionalities. And what do they mean by that is if you look at their homepage, for example, you can see this drop down menu, you can see the popover, for example, the dialogue and all these components. And these are really hard things to build with any component library because you need to make it accessible, make it keyboard friendly, make it work properly. Like if you have this drop down menu, you need to make sure that this is drop down under it or over it or to the right or left, depending on the configuration, stuff like that. So this headless library offers you that out of the box. Now the question is, what does ShadCN offer over that? They offer you styles. That's the first thing. So what ShadCN gives you out of the box are style components that look pretty and are easily reusable. So now you get all of these layers provided to you. So accessibility, functionality, and styling. And now the next thing is, they also give you best practices. And what do I mean by this? So imagine this scenario, you're building a component library and now your boss tells you, hey, we need to have six kinds of buttons. Now, how are you gonna make all of those styles? And how are you gonna be able to tell your developers, hey, if you want to use a primary button with this outline, you need to do these props and I'm gonna do something under the hood to make this possible. Well, you need to either do it manually or pick a third party package that does that for you. And this is where ShadCN comes in with their opinionated way of doing it. For example, if you want to do different types of buttons, you use class variance authority, or if you want to merge tailing classes they give you alien merge and they give you all of these small packages that are utilities around styling that help you build your component libraries easier and faster and you get all of these best practices out of the box and if you watch my previous video you're gonna know that they also give you the best practices when it comes to building components and now you might be wondering all right so that sounds great but how is this any different to other component libraries, for example, Mantine or Material UI or End Design or whatever else. Well, that is the biggest strength of ShadCN, and that is ownership. What ShadCN gives you that no other library does is ownership over your component libraries. And why is this important? Well, imagine this scenario. You're just a startup, you're getting off the ground, you need to move quickly, you need to choose a component library, and you have no idea what the company is gonna grow into, if it's gonna be successful or not, and you just care about the now. You pick a component library, for example, Material UI, and you're great. You got your components, it's working great for you, you're growing as a company, and you reach this point where you start outgrowing the component library you use, and you need to add custom functionality. And now here's where the problem comes in. You heavily rely on a third party component library, which code is not maintained by you. So if you wanted to add code changes into that component library, you would need to contribute to their project, which is not a big deal, but the issue is, will they accept it? When are they gonna accept it? Is it ever going to be merged? and stuff like that. And even worse, for example, Material UI, they use CSS in JS. And if you're using a new, a modern framework like Remix or React Java version 7, what happens is you have Material UI that uses CSS in JS 
that CSS in JS relies on emotion, I think. And what happens is it doesn't work with server-side rendering. And now you either have to hack around it or wait for them to support server-side rendering. And you're completely stuck if you need to do any sort of change or any sort of custom functionality. And there's a bunch more other problems that you can run into. This is just scratching the surface. But with ShadCN, you own your component library. So if you get to a point where you need a custom component library, well, you already have it. It's in your code base. You just need to extend it. So if you need a date picker, you just pull it from ShadCN. If you need something else, you pull it from there. If ShadCN doesn't have it, you just use everything you have in your code base to build that new thing without relying on anybody else. And when I say anybody else, I mean third party companies or projects to implement it for you. You can do it yourself. And that is why ShadCN is great because you don't outgrow it. They give you the code, you own it and you maintain it. And whatever you need, it's a copy paste away. And if you need to update your components, you can reference their migration guides and stuff like that. So you don't really have to worry about it later down the line. And this is why it's so great. And if you didn't think that was enough, the last thing they bring to the table is composition. And this is something I wanted to cover in my last video that I did, and I'm gonna link it somewhere on the top or somewhere. And that is how to compose React components. And if you look at their docs, and if you go to any of the components and you click preview, they don't use props to pass in state or they don't use props to style children elements. But what they do is they compose elements together. And what do I mean by that? If you look at this import here, they import the accordion from the accordion component and you get a bunch of other components from that file. For example, the accordion content, the accordion item, the accordion trigger. And what they allow you to do is compose these multiple components together to build your custom component. So if you look at the code here, for example, they have the accordion and the accordion provides the functionality. And then you have the accordion item. And then inside of the accordion item, you have the accordion trigger. And this triggers the accordion. And this shows when you trigger it on and off. And all of this is accessible. And this is the best way to build component libraries where you compose the components together. So if you reference my old video where I passed in input props and Byron props and stuff like that, that's really not the best way to do it. That's better, for example, if you're pressing in props like username and user last name, first name, stuff like that, you group it into an object. But for components, it's better to compose them together like this. So you have these smaller components that build up and compose together into a super component that does a lot of stuff. So for example, if you switch from the code to the preview, and if you click on any of these, you can see that they are accessible, styled and animated. And this is what I mean by composition. And if you look at any of these badge, okay, this one is a simple one, but for example, calendar is gonna be probably comp or not. <laughs> All right, combo box must be. All right, yeah. So you can look at it here and you can see that the combo box is composed out of multiple components. So you have the popover, the trigger and the button, and then you have your commands here and all of these small little pieces fit together to create this select framework button. And now you can select whatever you want and then you can also search it. For example, I'm doing remix and I search for remix and that is the best way to create components. And then again, if you wanted to, for example, add a prop to a button, you can do so here. If you wanted to add it to command list, you can do so here. If you wanted to add it to command, you can do so here and so on and so forth. And that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I actually have a huge announcement. I've joined up with Ken C. Dodds to become one of the Epic instructors on Epic Web. And I'm going to teach you React Router. So if you're interested in that, consider following the Epic Web and follow me on socials because I'll be making a bunch of announcements on when the course is dropping, what I'm going to be teaching you. We're going to do workshops. We're going to have a bunch of fun. So if you're interested in that, be sure to keep your eye out for everything that's coming. Thank Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!